Welcome to another Ziva Math video. In this video, we are going to practice solving one-step equations using addition and subtraction. First, let's talk about what a variable is. A variable is a letter used in place of the value we don't know or the value we are solving for. This isn't a new type of problem. You've come across problems where you had to find the unknown amount. You just saw a question mark or a blank used. Now you'll see a variable take the place of the question mark or the blank. The variable will represent that value that you are needing to solve for. The second thing I want you to think about is the equal sign. Most of us think about the equal sign as find the answer, but the equal sign actually shows you that whatever is on one side of the equal sign is of equal value to whatever is on the other side. I always tell my students to think about equations like a scale or the balance that they use in their science class. If we want to keep the two sides balanced, whatever we do to one side of the equation, we have to do the exact same thing to the other side. If I add a red circle to the left side of my balance, I have to add a red circle to the right side of my balance to keep it equal. This will be the same for the two sides of your equations. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. Let's take a look at our examples. For our first problem, we have x plus 3 equals 12. And we're solving for that variable x, our unknown value. And so the first thing that I always have my students do is put a box around it to remind them that's what they're wanting to isolate. We want to get this variable by itself. The next thing that I suggest that they do is draw a line between their two sides. Because remember, we just said that this equal sign means that whatever we have on the left side, our x plus 3 is of equal value to whatever is on the right side, the 12. Now, to get x by itself, we have to do the inverse operation. When we were adding 3, so the opposite of addition is subtraction. Our inverse operation is subtraction, and we need to subtract 3 because we want to get x all by itself. Whatever I do to the left-hand side, I have to do to the right-hand side, which means I needed to also subtract 3 from the right-hand side of my equation. Now, on the left, I still have x, I haven't done anything to it, 3 minus 3 is 0, and on the right hand side I have 12 minus 3, and 12 minus 3 is 9. Now our 0 doesn't have a value here, x plus 0 is x, so when we go to simplify this line we just need x x on the left side equals, we haven't done anything else to the 9, so x equals 9. Now, one nice thing about equations is you can go back and check your work. We're going to go back to that original problem, x plus 3 equals 12. We just solved it. We said x equals 9. So in place of x, we're going to put the 9. And then we still have the rest of the equation, plus 3 equals 12. And we're going to see, do we have our two sides equal? So on our left, 9 plus 3, 9 plus 3 is 12. So 12 equals 12, which means that our solution of x equals 9 is correct. If we don't get 12 equals 12, it means you made a mistake and you need to go work your equation again. One other thing you might be asked to do with equations is to graph your solution. Well, if our solution is x equals 9, the only answer for x is 9. So to graph it, you're going to put a dot on the 9. So our second example, we have 8 equals n plus 5. We change the variable to an n instead of an x. It does not matter. It's still your variable. It's still your unknown. And we put it on the right-hand side of the equation. And again, that doesn't matter either if we're thinking about the fact that the equal sign means that both sides have the same value. So again, I would suggest that you start by boxing your n, boxing your variable, and putting a line down the center of your equation so that you can keep both sides equal. Now looking on the right-hand side, we have n plus 5, and we want to isolate the n and get it all by itself, which means we need to use the inverse operation. Well, we added 5, so we need to subtract 5 as our inverse. If I subtract 5 from the right-hand side of my equation, I have to subtract 5 from the left-hand side of the equation to keep the two sides equal.
Now it doesn't matter which side you start on. If we want to start on the left hand side, we have 8 minus 5 is 3. Then on the right hand side, we haven't done anything to n, so n is still exactly how it is. And then we have 5 minus 5, and 5 minus 5 is 0. So if you want to show this step here where you have n plus 0, which I highly suggest at the beginning that you do, you need to do so. But remember, n plus 0 simply equals n. So if I want to simplify my equation, then I have 3, because we haven't done anything else to the 3 on the left, equals n. And then again, I do suggest that you go ahead and check these, because checking an equation is quick and easy. We solve for n, and we got 3. So I'm going to put 3 in place of n. Then I'm going to fill in the rest of my equation around it. So I have 8 equals 3 plus 5. So the question is, does 8 equal 3 plus 5? Well, 3 plus 5 is 8. So you just proved that the left-hand side equals the right-hand side, that 8 equals 8. So where you solve for 3 equals n, that is a true statement. If you don't get 8 equals 8, then you need to go back to your equation and work it again. For our first example with subtraction, we have y minus 12 equals 5. And again, our steps are going to remain the same. We need to isolate our variable. We need to isolate y, and you may want to put the box around it. And again, the line through the equal sign so that you can make sure that whatever you do to the left side of your equation, you do to the right-hand side is very helpful. So we have y minus 12, but we're going to get y by itself by doing the inverse operation. So we're subtracting in our original equation, which means your inverse is to add. And we're going to add 12 to both sides because we want to get y by itself. And adding 12 minus 12 plus 12 is 0 gets us y by ourselves itself on the left hand side. But if we add 12 to the left, we need to add 12 to the right because you need to keep both sides of your equation equal. So I haven't done anything to y yet. So y remains the same. And then I have negative 12 plus 12, which is zero, equals, and our equal signs remain lined up, five plus 12, because that's what we have on the right. So five plus 12 is 17. Well, y plus 0 is just y, so now we can simplify this line. y plus 0 is y. My equal sign remains lined up, and I didn't do anything to the 17 on the right, so y equals 17. And if I want to check my equation, the same steps for checking remain, even though we've got subtraction. I solve for y, and I got 17. So in place of y, when I go to check my work, I'm going to put 17. And I need to check that 17 minus 12 really is 5. So 17 minus 12 is 5. 5 on the left-hand side equals the 5 on the right-hand side. So y does equal 17. Remember, if you're checking and you don't get 5 equals 5, then y could not have equaled 17, and you need to go redo the problem. And if you're needing to graph, we can also graph when we have a subtraction equation as well. If we got y equals 17, if we're going to graph it, it's a closed-in dot on 17 because y equals 17. It can't be anything else. For our final example, we have 7 equals c minus 6. And even with subtraction, the variable part of your equation can end up on the right side. It doesn't matter. Your steps are the same. So you may want to put the box around the C and draw the line so that you can see what you're doing on the left-hand side and on the right side. We're going to start on the right-hand side because that's where our variable is, C minus 6. We want to get C all by itself, which means we're going to need to add 6. If I add 6 to the right, because that's my inverse to subtracting 6, then I also need to add 6 to the left. Whatever I do on the right, I have to do on the left. So I get 7 plus 6 is 13. I'm going to keep my equal sign lined up. And I didn't do anything to the C. It's still in my problem exactly the way it is. And I have minus 6 plus 6, which is plus 0. And then I can simplify because c plus 0 is simply c. 
So on the right hand side I'm going to have C and then on the left hand side I didn't do anything to the 13 so the 13 will remain the same. So I get 13 equals C. And then we're also going to check this one. So we're going to take that same original equation, 7 equals C minus 6, and we're going to plug in the 13 that we just found for C. We said C equals 13, so I'm going to substitute 13 for C. And then I'm going to have C minus 6, so 13 minus 6 equals 7 is what I'm checking. So does 13 minus 6 actually equal 7? Well, 13 minus 6 is 7, so I have 7 equals 7, which is a true statement. So where I solve for C and found it to be 13, that is the correct answer. Thank you for watching. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to Ziva Math for more videos.